This is the year 2013. This is what the phone looks like. Monkey Nabalu. 10 ringgit. This is what the phone looks like in 1921. Monkey Nabalu. 10 ringgit. I was born in 1921 and that makes me 92 years old. See that belfry over there? Yeah, that's me. The British built me in the middle of the Dao town field to remember the 1918 peace treaty. Dawa is a town in Sabah, which is also the birthplace of Amber Chia, you know, the supermodel. I survived World War II and the great fire that destroyed the whole town in 1953. So yeah, I'm kind of indestructible. I've seen prime ministers come and go. I've seen the Japanese come and go. I've seen the British come and go and return and leave again. The British North Borneo Company took over North Borneo in the late 19th century after obtaining a lease from the Sultan of Sulu, according to Wikipedia that is. What the Sultan did not know is that his descendants would return and claim Sava 135 years later. <laughs> I know, it's complicated. The Japanese came in 1942 with a propaganda, Asia for the Asians. Some fell for it, some did not. The people suffered for the next few years as the Allied forces tried to take back North Borneo. The Japanese surrendered in 1945, and the British ruled over this land once again. But the tormenting memories remain as they were told to the younger generations. The proposed union of Malaysia gained the support of most Sabahans. They wanted what's best for their sons and daughters. They wanted a better Sabah. 13th of May, 1969, the day politics and race made the citizens of Kuala Lumpur turn against each other. Even if nothing happened here in Tawau and in many other parts of Malaysia, the young ones were warned about how destructive racism can be. This is what we see on TV these days. The truth is, we are more separated than we were in 1969. This is tearing Malaysia apart and every new generation could only learn from the ones before them. So if the children of today are told about the ugly sides of other races, they will tell that to their descendants. It goes on and on and racism will become worse than it ever was. That's what you call brainwashing. The new economic policy was introduced in 1971 and is said to have reduced the poverty rate by about 30%. Even after it ended, its principles have been continued in subsequent plans and the rate dropped to 1.7% in 2012. Some said it was a success, others disagree. However, the new generation of Malaysians couldn't see the big picture of why the policy was necessary. All they see is two different socio-economic groups defined by ethnic background, but balance of the policy created was necessary. As the poverty rate decreases, the crime rate increased tremendously, and Kuala Lumpur made its way to the top 10 list of the most dangerous city in the world. Mrs. Sleeve said that she doesn't even feel safe in her own country anymore. She said Malaysia wasn't like those days anymore when you could walk on the streets without worrying about snatch thieves and being splashed by acid. She also mentioned how racially divided the youths are. And back then, when she was a student, race was the last thing you would think about when making friends. I watched this nation grow for almost a hundred years now. There were so many things that changed over the years. Fashion trends, culture, technology, I have seen generations being replaced by the next. I have seen them go from being a tomorrow to a yesterday. I have seen people make decisions based on the vision of the tomorrow they had in mind. And I watched as the decisions they make turn against them. And I know one thing is for sure. As long as we care for one another, for this country, for the world, we shall survive. 
This is probably what Will Smith would look like in 2100. This guy. Malaysia. <laughs>